All right, guys, let's talk about invoices inside high level. There's a lot to know about invoice settings and all of the different options that you have with invoices. So stay tuned. This is might be a little bit of a longer video, but that's okay because I'm going to cover everything from start to finish. So um, we are in the payments tab again, and this time we are in invoices and estimates, more specifically all invoices. Okay, you have options. You have one-time invoices, you have recurring invoices, you have templates, and then this is a brand new feature called estimates, which is basically sending an invoice, but it's it's an estimate invoice instead. So first thing that I want you to do when you get into the invoice settings when you're setting up your new account is that you're gonna go into settings right here. Okay, now for some reason it goes auto automatically to payment settings, but go to business information first. This is gonna be the business information that's gonna display on the company section of the invoice itself. So while I do this, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna open up an invoice right here. So we're gonna do a new invoice, which is gonna be a one-time invoice. The other option is that you use a recurring invoice. If you have a product that has a subscription base on it, you can use a recurring invoice. We're just gonna use a new standard invoice right here. And you'll notice that the information for the company is all right over here. So that's what we're gonna be setting up in the settings right here. So let's go and upload a file. I'm gonna upload my GHL Mastery logo here in black. And then that is gonna be the default logo for our estimates. Now if I go over here and click refresh, let's see if this pops in. Not quite yet, but it'll show up right here uh, once you actually have it set up and ready to go. Okay, so there's all of your standard contact information and if you wanted to add custom value information to this as well, you certainly can by adding specific custom values right here. Um, I don't need to do that in this case, but there you go. You can add custom values to it as well. So start with this because that's gonna be the default information on your invoice for the business that you're operating from, whether that's your business or your client's business. Um, and again, this is gonna default to the business information of the location that you're in. Okay, next up, you're gonna do your email configurations. What is the from name and from email? So again, you can do business name and you can do like a billing at um, email address here. You can set up your title and terms. Um, so if it's an estimate, it's an estimate. If it's an invoice, it's an invoice. Um, so these are your estimate title and terms. You can do estimate for contact.name. Um, and you can have terms and notes that are gonna be default terms on the actual estimate itself. So if we go back, we're gonna talk with the invoice here. Um, if we go back down here, your terms are gonna be laid out on the bottom right here. So under additional options, you've got your terms right here, which you can write brand new for every single invoice you want. But if you set up terms in here, they work, they're gonna be default on all new invoices that you create. So let's just do these are the payment terms dot 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 um, you can also hyperlink things so you can have terms of services and things of that nature all linked to this um, I've used this to add and include wire information um, on my invoices so that if they don't want to pay with a credit card and they want to wire it they can do that as well so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save on that and then we're gonna go to payment settings now this is payment settings for estimates right here um, payment settings, estimates will expire after 14 days and then estimate prefix. So this is going to default to EST-1 on your first estimate, EST-2 on the next one and so on and so forth. So if you wanted to add like a 00, you could do it that way and it'd be 001, 002 and so on and so forth. Um, invoice due after X number of days. So this is going to be the default due dates when you create the invoice. So it'll be from the day that you created it and sent it. 14 days out is when that invoice is going to be due um, in the system. Manage default Stripe payments for your invoices. So this is going to allow you to turn on partial payments. And so if you turn on partial payments, it's gonna say, what is the minimum percentage of the invoice that needs to be paid each time? So we like to do 50%, any custom build that we do, um, it requires a 50% payment up front and then a 50% payment on completion. You can add default late charges here as well, um, which I've never done, but you can certainly do it. So 1% charge every month, the invoice is overdue with a grace period of 10 days. So let's click on manage um, and you can change that to a flat fee every one month with a grace period of 10 days um, and a max late fee of X, right? You can do a percentage based late fee 
um, every month for, with a grace period of 10 days with a maximum late fee of X as well, which is a super handy feature that I've never used. Um, allow tip payments, another relatively new feature. Um, you can add five, 10, 15% payments on your invoices. Personally, I don't need a tip, um, so I'm gonna turn that off and I will leave the rest on. We're gonna go ahead and click save for that one. Um, import product description is gonna be, if you're invoice, importing products from Stripe that already have a product description, it's gonna display those product descriptions on the invoice themselves. So we're gonna click save there. Um, reminder settings is something that, again, you can set up inside invoices, but I typically like to manage everything through a workflow um, whenever possible. But let's go ahead and add a reminder here which is not letting me, I don't know why. Okay, we're gonna skip this. And then any custom fields that you wanna to add to the invoices here, you can also add to the invoices here, um, which I've never done before, so let's do one. Let's do a single line, save. I don't know what that just did. We're gonna find out here soon. Um, oh, I've got a couple of custom fields here. Um, additional phone number, so there you go. Let's add those there too, and click save. Now, this is really important and something that a lot of people forget or they miss completely when it comes to the invoices is the emails that go out, okay? It's really, really important to understand that with invoices, especially on the invoice received, no matter what you do, when you send an invoice, this is going to get sent. You cannot turn it off, it is on by default. So what you need to do here is you need to probably, in my opinion, create an invoice email template that has your logo, that is your brand, and so on and so forth, which again, you're gonna do that in marketing and email templates and then that template's gonna show up right here. Um, again, with SMS templates as well, you can use what's called snippets, um, which if you go into conversations over here and then snippets, that's where you can create snippets for your SMS defaults for when an invoice gets sent out. Okay, so let's go back into settings here. Um, this invoice received is gonna go out when you send an invoice to the customer. Okay, estimate received is gonna go out by default when you send an estimate to a customer. Invoice payment successful is gonna go out to the customer when they successfully pay the invoice. Um, and so you've got the SMS template there as well. Um, and then invoice payment failed, anytime that they try to make a payment and it fails, you can send them an, in, an email letting them know that it failed. Um, auto payment information, what is this? Template used to notify customers regarding upcoming auto debit on the card. Ah, yes. So if you have a recurring invoice that's going out, your recurring invoice is gonna notify them, hey, your payment's coming due here X amount of time, um, and it's gonna send that email there as well, and then auto payment failed. If their payment fails for their invoice, um, it'll obviously send them this email as well. So you can customize the email, and then you can customize the subject line of each email that goes out. These are default settings that you cannot change and you can't use workflows to send that initial um, invoice sent notification. It's always gonna use these ones. These ones here, you can turn off and you can trigger off of a workflow um, in that event. These are for internal notifications. So same notifications, but this time, instead of them going to a customer, they're actually gonna to go to the user or the uh, owner of the sub account. So there's all of these different notifications that you do need to set up if you wanna use them that are gonna be default notifications across the board for when an invoice gets sent out. So that's the basics of the invoice settings. Now I'm gonna close this tab and we're gonna create a new invoice again and see if that logo pulled in and it, for whatever reason it did not. I don't know why it's not pulling in, but it's not pulling in. But let's go ahead and create an invoice for our custom build. So we've got the default business information, which is right here. If you need to edit this, you can edit this from here. Let's go ahead and add the business logo this time here and then let's save the address information there. There's the business logo there. Um, and now we've got the company information over here. You next need to select a customer. So let's go with Adam McInnes. Um, and this is gonna automatically pull in the custom field that we put in there, as well as the additional phone number um, and any other contact information that we have. So by default, it's gonna be name, email, phone number, and address. Um, and as long as those fields exist, it will display them here on the build to section. It's gonna have a default invoice number of 00001. Next one's gonna be 0002. Um, and then they'll have the option to pay over there as well. Invoice settings. We can change the invoice number if we want to. No need. Um, it's gonna automatically update. 
the date issued is going to default to today and then this due date is going to default to two weeks because we have that set to 14 for the default due date um, so I don't know why there's an error here late fees applicable there you go that's why now we can come down and we can add products so let's go and add a custom build product now you'll notice that the other product wasn't available because that product is a recurring product so um, that was five payments of 1250 this one is just a one-time payment of 1500 and so if you have a recurring product you have to use a recurring invoice which we'll cover in just a bit here so let's go ahead and add that product um, if you wanted to you can add a tax you can adjust the quantity you can even adjust the price and so even though I've created a product at $5,000, I can actually use that same product and manage and adjust the price inside the invoice itself as well. Let's get my head out of the way here. Um, you can come in and you can add a discount. So let's say I wanted to give them a 15% discount. You can do that and it's going to automatically discount the billing right there. You can add a payment schedule. So this is what is known as split pay. So here we can say we can offer them a percentage of 50% due on let's just say the 30th and then the last 50% is due on the due date which was December 12th you cannot go beyond this due date you have to either set the due date first and then allow the split payment um, to be due on the due date you can't go past the due date it won't work um, so then you can hit save now what this is going to do is that when they go to pay this they will have the option to just pay this half or pay the whole thing um, effectively. Now, once if they do pay this half of the invoice, that does not constitute as an invoice paid yet. It will show up as partially paid inside the system. And when they pick this second payment, then it will show the invoice is fully paid on the payment tab. And then your additional options, which we already went over, is your default terms of service. So you'll notice that this right here is the default terms of service that we put in the settings. It's automatically going to get pulled in, and then you can add any additional information here that you want to for your invoice. Then once you go ahead and click send, off it goes, invoice sent. I'm going to get that first default email that the invoice got sent. Um, again, highly recommend that you name these things otherwise they're going to get lost in translation and every single invoice that you put out there is going to have a new invoice um, another thing that's really really important that i'll mention right now that i'm going to cover in another section here is that if you're using documents and contracts with products on them and you have the invoice auto generated it's going to use the name of the contract or estimate that you send through your documents and contracts um, which is really really it's really quite handy we use it a bunch um, in our agency but do make sure that you name this and at the very minimum you put the client's name on here um, because otherwise they will get lost and if you've sent out a bunch of invoices that are you're just gonna have a bunch of new invoices um, with no easy or good way to find which invoice was which now you can save this invoice which is going to now save the invoice in here so you're gonna have a new saved invoice that is still sitting in draft mode so if you ever need to go in and make adjustments and changes um, you can do that prior to sending it out um, and then we're just gonna go back in we're gonna edit we've got some options here as well so we can record a payment on this we can convert this specific invoice into a template that can be used in workflows we can manage tips which I have turned off which we're not gonna do we can manage late fees and then we can manage payment methods here Next up, we can send this invoice. And now we've got a couple of other settings here. So let's go ahead and change this name. And we're just going to put my name in here to Adam McInnes. We're going to notify only through email because actually, no, we did set up a phone number. We can do a phone number. Um, and then which email do you want to send? Which email template do you want to be the one to send? Now in here, this is kind of handy. You can actually come in here and you can edit the email it's by default it's going to use the location logo but if you want to change the default template you can actually change it in here before you send it and then you can save it as a new template um, as well which you can then use on all of your other invoice templates moving forward additional options down here is going to allow you to toggle this between live mode and test mode like so okay now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to send this and i'm going to show you what this looks like when it comes through on the other side all right, so this is the invoice default email template that was sent out. Um, so it's got our logo up there from our location, and then it says, hey, it's a new invoice. Hi, Adam. 
this is the location name sent you an invoice for this amount that is due on December 12th. So we can go ahead and view the invoice from here. And now it's showing that the invoice is exactly how we created it. It's showing the discount. It's showing that payment one of two is pending. Now I can click this pay button right here and I can choose to pay both or one um, of these invoices. So let's go ahead and select both. And then we're gonna put in the fake credit card information here. And we're gonna click pay. And boom, invoice is now paid. So let's go over into NurtureBox again, AKA high level. Refresh this and we'll show an invoice paid status right here. There you go, invoice has been paid. This little icon right here tells you that this was an invoice that was in test mode so it wasn't real, uh, which is why none of these items are showing anything either. Um, but there you go, guys. That's how you create a standard one-time invoice. Next up, we're going to go and we're going to create a recurring invoice. We're going to follow the exact same structure, but there's a couple minor tweaks um, that you have to make inside a recurring invoice. So first of all, you have to have a product that is a recurring invoice product. So we're going to click in new recurring invoice. We're going to add a customer. We're going to add Adam again. We're going to add a product. This time, we will only see the recurring product that we have right here. So now we've got the recurring product quantity of one, and we are going to keep on moving. Um, where are the settings for the recurring invoice? Oh, there they go. They're right down here. Recurring invoice settings. So how often? Monthly, on date, the first of every one month. So on the first of every month, I'm going to get this invoice and we're gonna select the start date of today and we're gonna select an end date by and then you can select the, uh, the effective end date. Now this one is five months out. So let's go five months from today. So November one, two, three, four, five. And it is the 28th. So we're gonna pick the 28th of April um, and then we can choose to send how soon in advance do we want to send the invoice. So if we want to send the invoice three days in advance, we would set three days in advance and this will then get sent on the 25th of every month for them to pay on the 28th of every month. Um, so first invoice will be due December 1st and sent on November 28th. Additional options is going to be your terms and status here. Um, and that's basically it. The only difference is that you're going to be adjusting your recurring invoice settings here. Um, so there you go, guys, that's invoicing. It's not rocket science. Uh, they make it pretty easy uh, to do. And it's just another easy and quick way to get paid by your customers. See you in the next one. Hey guys, I hope you found that video useful and helpful for you getting your company set up in high level and getting your white label started with the high level ecosystem. Now, if you're just starting out your journey in the high level ecosystem, or maybe you're even an intermediate um, or consider yourself an expert that just wants to know a little bit more about the high level platform and how you can leverage it, I would encourage you to go and click the link in the description below this video and hop into our GHL Mastery program. What do we do inside of our GHL Mastery program? Well, we have five calls every single day of the week, Monday through Friday for two hours a day, where we actually help you get into your system, help you build, help you troubleshoot, and just overall help elevate your overall skill set on the high level platform. So if you're interested in getting hands on every single day support, plus a couple of bonus goodies, snapshots, AI systems, the like, then go ahead and click the link below to join our GHL Mastery VIP group. And I promise you, you will learn more in one month than you will in six months doing this on your own. We will see you in the next one. Take care.